Okay, so I want to talk with you guys about my Quran schedule. Basically, every Ramadan, I start reading the Quran from the first page until like the last day of Ramadan. So like uh, throughout the whole Ramadan, I finish reading one Quran, alhamdulillah. But this Ramadan, um, there is a bit... Well, okay, things are a bit complicated actually. Right now I am in just 16. As you can see, I only have nine pages left until just 17. So, which means I can start from the first page till last. Well, actually, I can, you know, like I can stop this and start to the Ramadan one. But then I don't want to stop this. I want to finish this. And then I want to start reading Quran once again. So I'm just going to move on with this one. No problem. If I finish reading it towards the uh, middle of Ramadan, then I will start again from the first page. Uh, so that's the routine. That's the schedule, basically. Um, also, finally, as you guys saw from the earlier clip, I am back at studying Quran. And this time I'm trying a new method. Before, I used to study Quran in Turkish. And let me show you guys how I used to study. Wait a second. I used to study only using my iPad. Um, and it was in Turkish. So I had this folder called Quran Meali. It means Quran meaning or Quran translation in Turkish. At first, when I first started reading the Quran, this PDF was in my laptop. And then I used to read the meaning and take notes here in uh, my iPad like that. As you can see, there are some notes. But then I was like, okay, now that I have notes, I started studying the Quran again from the first page. Um, and then this time I just, you know, downloaded the PDF and just, you know, read it from here. I highlighted the important verses or the verses that I want to contemplate it more. And as you can see, I was a bit, you know, aggressive while <laughs> um, learning the meaning. But it's just that it's so beautiful. Every verse is better than the other like i don't know you guys i just want to sit and just think about every single word like why is this word here like why is that word here so um yeah that's how i used to study but this time i am back with a beautiful method you guys as you saw earlier i will be listening the recitation of the quran by uh, the sheikh called um mishari rashid al-afasi um, I've been listening to his recitations ever since I was a kid. That's how I literally like memorized most of the surahs that I know. I will basically be listening to him. And from the other hand, again, from like the same iPad method, I downloaded a Quran PDF, but in English translation, which I'm very happy of. In fact, this one has both Arabic and English. So I'm really, really excited for this one. Um, I can't wait to film more Ramadan vlogs. I hope you guys are enjoying this video. So far, I'm enjoying it so much while filming. So yeah. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In the name of Allah, the most compassionate and the most merciful الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنحتدي لولا أن هدان الله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته we are back, well, actually I am back with another Tafakr session. Today's Tafakr session will be about Rizq, the concept that makes the flower of hope within us grow. There is one thing that I noticed in my religion, and that is hope. No, seriously. I noticed that Islam is a religion of hope. While taking wudu, meaning ablution, you wash off all your minor sins. Smiling is a charity and it has a reward. When making dua for others and without their presence, the angels will respond to your dua and say, and the same unto you. Nature and its beautiful system. All these and a ton more beautiful examples are filled with hope in it. It gives a hope to keep surviving and living this life. It gives hope to be a better person. It gives hope about Allah's infinite mercy and love. 
it gives hope that this dunya can actually be a better place, inshallah. So today, I want to mention a concept that is in our religion. When you actually contemplate about this concept, you will realize how merciful and powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, and you will be filled with hope. Rizq, meaning provision. It includes everything that we have been provided with by Allah. While wealth is a form of provision, it is not the only form of rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us with many other forms of rizq. He provided us with external rizq, like food, shelter, and clothing. So now, in today's Tafakr session, let's focus on the food form of rizq. We humans are not the only creation living in this world, right? There are various types of animals, sea animals, flying animals, and plants. We can never ever be sure of how many creations there are in this world. We don't even know the 95% of the ocean, so yeah. Now, let's think for a moment. Have you ever wondered how these animals have food? Like literally, imagine all of the animals. There are thousands of fishes, in fact, millions of fishes and other sea animals, thousands of birds and other flying insects, little insects that we cannot even see with our eyes, millions of plants that are different than the other. And don't forget that every single one of them has their own diet. For example, lions are carnivores, which means they are animals that can only eat meat. Or another example, cows are most likely to eat plants. I only gave two examples of animals having different diets. Now imagine millions of animals out there living. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their creator. They know that, so they don't worry about the food, shelter, and etc. And they only keep living. Allah is the one who provides them. And no one besides Allah knows where all those animals live. Some may be between the mountains, in the middle of a desert, deep down in the ocean, or in the middle of nowhere. The plants as well. Imagine how many plants are there in this world. We can never ever guess. SubhanAllah. But still, every day they have food and they live because they have a creator that thinks about them and provides them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides all the animals and plants every day with his mercy and power. Now let me ask you a question. Don't you know that you are more valuable than a lion, cow, bird, fish, flower, or a tree in front of your Lord? What makes you think that he has forgotten you when he is the one who keeps providing all the other creations we don't even know? What makes you think that he will not answer your prayer when he provides all those animals even when they can't ask from their Lord? They can't even talk. Now let's focus on our food. This morning I had a cereal. I poured the cereal and then the milk. And I wondered, contemplated about from where did this milk came from? We all know that milk comes from cow, right? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was providing that cow, my name was written on that cow's milk. So no matter what, I was going to drink that milk, even if the whole world came together and tried to stop me from drinking that milk, I would have still drink that milk. Why? Because that was my rizq, that was my provision. My name was written on that cow's milk. Even when that cow was not born, my name was written on that cow's milk. In fact, not like any other cow, but specifically that cow's milk. SubhanAllah, like this is literally a miracle for me. Just imagine you guys, every single day we eat, we eat, we eat, we eat meals, we eat snacks, we have drinks. And all those like meals, they don't only come from one ingredient, for example, a cake is made of eggs, milk, and blah, blah, blah. Like, imagine all those provisions, like your name was written in that egg, in that milk, and they had to come and, you know, mix up together, and you will eat that as a cake. SubhanAllah, like, this is such a hopeful thing going on in here, you guys. Like, 
please please ponder deeply about what i'm trying to explain it's just something amazing when i was writing down this tafakkur on my laptop there were like goosebumps all over my body i was like subhanallah like allah is truly the most powerful and we just have to think more about him and there was this beautiful peace in my heart so alhamdulillah my sisters and brothers this is the power of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact this is just one of the things he can do with his power what makes you lose your hope about this dunya and about the akhirah when you have a creator like this what makes you think that he has forgotten you and he will not answer your prayers he is always there waiting for you with all his mercy and compassion he sees you he hears you he knows you he knows what's in your heart wallahi when you take one step towards him he will take 10 steps towards you when you walk to him he will run to you now gather up get yourself together and be hopeful pray with hope and pray knowing that you are asking from the one who is the most powerful and the most merciful turn back to him and let all the beauties the miracles turn back to you today's tabak procession was a short one but i feel like it is one of the special ones so far this tafakkur, it's just that I can say a lot more about the concept of rizq. But overall, this is the message I want to deliver to you guys. Please look at everything in Islam. Like not only the rizq, but there is also faith. Look at faith. Faith also gives a lot of hope in one's life. Look at the concept of dua. It gives a lot of hope. Look at the concept of five daily prayers. Salah. It gives a lot of hope. Everything in Islam has hope in it. So please don't ever be hopeless. It is not uh, a Muslim's duty to lose hope. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this type of session opened like a little light in your heart that will help you uh, learn more about Islam, inshallah. Um, and yeah, may Allah bless you. Stay safe and ma'asalam. Bye.